So we're here with Colton Turner, who has just spoken at the United Patients Group Medical Cannabis Conference this weekend. And you traveled here from Colorado to California to speak to our attendees. So thank you yeah. for being here. And I guess I should say that right off the bat, it's been a kind of a crazy last couple of days for you and your family, right? Your mom had a had a gallbladder issue and is in the hospital right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, luckily, my mom, uh, she's doing better. We're still determining what we're going to do next at this point. Okay. Uh, Great. She's, she's been doing a lot better. We may be able to leave. Right. Uh, we may be able to, like, leave tomorrow. Right. Uh, we may have to stay a couple more days. Right. We st it's just waiting and figuring out what we're going to do. Well, it's amazing to me. Uh, first of all, so you are how old? 16. Okay. And you said something earlier. So you were born on leap year. Is that right? Yeah. So you're really how four, old? Four years old. <laughs> you're amazingly uh, articulate and grown up and you look nice in a tie for a four year old. So that's good. <laughs> so you are a Crohn's patient. And how long have you uh, been dealing with Crohn's? Uh, well, I've been kind of dealing with it my whole life, but my initial diagnosis was when I was 11. Okay. And so that's a, you know, it's a time in anybody's life, especially a young boy's life where you're active, you want to run around, you want to be out with your friends and do things with your family. How did that impact or change your life back in, at 11 years old? Oh, it impacted my life completely. I couldn't do anything really. Uh, I couldn't, and at one point I couldn't stand for longer than a minute. I was, oh. the two, the three different places that I would be during the day would be on the couch in the bathroom or on my bed. Wow, that's really uh, it's devastating, and it's hard to, to hear that, actually. did And your family was living in Illinois at the time, is yeah. that right? Yes. So what kind of experience were you having on the medication that you were taking when you were first diagnosed with Crohn's? What was that like for you? Well, the very first medication basically didn't do anything at all. It was like taking the Tylenol every day Okay. or... Uh, any kind of painkiller. Mm -hmm. It really didn't help my Crohn's pains. It didn't help me grow. Didn't stop uh, the bathroom visits. Mm -hmm. Didn't regain energy, and I still didn't have a very good appetite. Okay. And so, how did your family, or you, uh, or a combination of both of that, those groups, how did you discover medical cannabis? Well, uh, it was mainly just my mom and dad uh, researching. One day, my my dad said hey, uh, we're going to try medical cannabis. My only question is, what are the side effects? Right. He basically said that, well, it may not work. I said, all right, let's go. But I want to wait until after my birthday. Right. Which was the last birthday I've had in Illinois, which has been two years. So we've heard the term medical refugees before, which is when patients and their families can't get access to cannabis legally in the state that they live, so therefore they have to move or choose to move to another state where it is legal. Is that what your family did? Yep, that's exactly what we did. On uh, March 4th, me and my dad, we left our entire family, including my mom, brother, sisters, and we just went up to Colorado. We didn't know what we were gonna do. All we'd have was some money and a suitcase full of clothes. We didn't know where we were gonna go, what we were gonna do, or how we were even gonna get the cannabis. That, that makes me emotional. Um, how did that impact you? Well, uh, when we first started treating it, uh, I, felt, I felt better. I was starting to feel better. I had a little more energy. The pains weren't exactly gone, but they were reduced. Uh, this was just mainly because uh, when we first came out here, we were mainly getting our medicine from recreational dispensaries. Okay. And we would basically make them into little pop brownies. My dad would try one, see how it affect him, cut it in quarters, and then he'd give it to me. And you were about 13 at the time, 14 years old at the time? Uh, I was just turning 14. You were just turning 14. And so, obviously, because you'd been living with this pain, the discomfort, the interruption to your life in general, was this a, uh, did you feel, um, how quickly did you feel like this was helping you? Uh, it only took a couple of days to actually see the effects wow. that it was take that was taking place. Amazing. Uh, I believe a couple of days or a couple of weeks after I started taking it, we went to the uh, Continental Divide mm -hmm. uh, in the mountains, mm -hmm. and 
me and my dad, we wanted to see uh, all the mountains from this amazing view, by the way, if you ever go, I, I encourage you I haven't you to been go there yet. I'd love to it's, see it. It's beautiful. Uh, well, it was snow. There was snow everywhere. So as he's starting to walk away, I'm lagging behind. So my dad is thinking, oh, he's still a little tired. He's just lagging behind. All of a sudden, he gets hit in the back of the head with a snowball, <laughs> and I start running away. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had been wheelchair bound. Oh, my gosh. You're kidding. That's remarkable. That's, that sounds like a modern day miracle to me. It, and it really was. It really, really was. And so after you and your father were sort of um, exploring this, going out on your own, you had to leave your family, your friends, the life that you had back in Illinois, um, the uncertainty even of how much to dose, you know, how, how often to give it to you, what strain I would imagine even to give it to you. Have things changed now? Uh, are you uh, finding that there is a lot more relevant and, and uh, reliable information out there for other patients that are following in your footsteps? Yeah, I think that there's uh, a whole lot of information out there. It's just a matter of finding it out yourself. I don't, me personally, I'm pro-choice. I don't think that I should force cannabis legalization on people, but mm -hmm. I... I don't think that they should hate on cannabis either. I think that right. they should do their own research mm -hmm. and figure out their own opinion on it. Right. Because a lot of people, including my dad, they had the D.A.R.E. program and right. programs, they shoved down their throat. So they, right. know, they don't know anything else. They really don't have their own opinion on, on it. We've talked a lot this weekend about the stigma around uh, cannabis in general and one of the programs that you're talking about, D.A.R.E. and, you know, uh, the whole, uh, you know, your brain on drugs campaign that really sort of took hold in the 1980s when your father and mother were much younger and all of that. It has had a long lasting negative effect on people in general and their perception of what cannabis is or you know, known much more widely as a recreational and illegal drug. Obviously, you know, you're a young man uh, who had a very debilitating uh, illness and this has helped you. And look at you, here you are, you're speaking at conferences and all that. So it sounds like you will continue to put the message out there that this has worked for you. This has been your 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 savior basically absolutely i think that people should uh see for their see for themselves the benefits mm -hmm. of medical cannabis mm -hmm. and it's not even called marijuana it's called medical cannabis right right so I, that's one step stop calling it marijuana it's <laughs> cannabis <laughs> Right. I know that's a thing for me too. I mean, I have a very difficult time in calling it by more of a recreational or a street name because it has so many amazing benefits that from everything like you're mentioning to cancer, to Crohn's and, and a lot of different uh, modalities in between there. So I agree with you. That's really great. So um, I understand that you were awarded the 2015 Cannabis Activist Award. Advocate. Advocate. Okay. Yeah, so advocate. 2015 Cannabis Advocate of the Year. How was that? That's amazing. It, it was amazing considering that one of the other uh, people that were nominated was Melissa Etheridge. And I beat Wow. Her. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, a, a really like a Grammy winning She's, rock star. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's Colton. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, there, there were a whole ton of other people that were nominated and they are just amazing. Wow. But I, I am very grateful that I was even nominated in the first place. Well, and not only nominated, but, but you were selected. That's really remarkable. And it sounds like you, you know, you've been sort of given a responsibility to make sure that, uh, you know, the voice and, and your words are heard out there more. So we understand that you have a pretty active, is it a website that you have or a uh, Facebook page? Uh, fa Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have a online website, coltonscrew.org. Okay. Uh, go on Facebook. Colton's crew, Twitter, same thing. Awesome. But just a fair warning, it's not crew as in C-R-E-U. It's like Motley Crew, C-R-U-E. Got it. Okay. And who was the Motley Crew fan in your in your world? That is it you or my mom. <laughs> okay, so your mom's a secret rocker. That's <laughs> maybe not so secret after all. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> Colton, we are so happy to see how healthy you are and how articulate and obviously passionate you are about medicinal cannabis. 
Thank you so much for being here at United Patients Group, and we wish you the best health for the rest of your life. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to, just to be here. Great, great. Thank you so much. No problem.